Recap from part 1. I took a thrift store doll and started sculpting on top of it to create the regenerator. Now it's time for me to paint on it. But we'll past the recap, right? Right? Good, let's get to painting this guy now. So this base coat. This base coat. <sighs> Where do I begin with this one? This one took several times to get it right. I mean, it went from a muddy brown to a muddy gray to almost gray. I don't even know what was going on here. I, I guess I was trying to figure out, like, the color theme for the guy. It didn't take until, like, even when I, I been, got to the color that I thought I liked, it still didn't look right. But whatever, I'm done trying to repaint this guy over and over again. So the next step to this guy is to dry brush him. Yes, I mean dry brushing the heck out of this guy. And I strongly believe that dry brushing him actually helped this figure. He went from a muddy looking gray color to more gray tone to what I was looking for actually. And I love it. It really looked like the regenerator from the original Resident Evil 4. Not much so of the remake, but more of the original. Once all the dry brushing was done, it was time to move on to the creature's arm. Well, that one arm that looked like it's been taken through a blender and all. I mixed a few red colors together to get the color that I wanted, and I went to town with this one. Having dark red seeping through the cracks in the arm, and then going from dark to light to the painting, I think I did a little bit of a wash around the base, and that was pretty much it with the arm. Next up is the face up. Finally, after all the time, we're finally getting to the face up or this doll. And nothing too special happened with the face. I really just used paint for his face up this time around. I completely forgot about pastel this time. Don't worry, later doll customization, I will use pastels. I used the same red paint that I used for his arm and his mouth. It was really hard to get inside the mouth because of the teeth. I knew I should have taken them out before they dried. Too late now. Then they painted the teeth, which made it look really gross, and I like it. Now I know that the regenerated teeth aren't this sharp, but pointing, but um, I really like it, so I'm keeping it. I even did a bit of a wash on the teeth, but it didn't work out like I wanted it to. I don't know if you can see it. Moving on to the eyes, they were a bit of a struggle for me. I think I didn't wait for the paint to dry in between, like, like putting red and yellow on top of it. So one of the eyes, which is the right side of the eye, by the way, started to dry lopsided. I don't need really to know if you can see it on the camera, but um, it did dry lopsided. So off camera, I had to redo the eye entirely. So it will look different in the upcoming scene. Next up, it's time for me to varnish his eyes and mouth. And also his arm, because I wanted it to be glossy. But before I actually varnish him, I actually off camera spray him down with Mr. Super Clear. Then I varnish everything on him. Now that the doll is finally done, Hello there. it's time for us to get to the long-awaited board. This cutting board that I found at Goodwill. I think I had a different idea for this board, a different plan for it. But now it's becoming the base for the regenerator. I tried to remove what looked like food on top of the board, but it wasn't very successful. So I flipped it over to the other side, and that's what I used for the rest of the video. I grabbed out some boxes and got to work. This looks familiar, but just ignore that. So I'm going to state this. This was my first attempt at making a background for my base. This was me working on the base as I was working on the doll at the same time. So I think halfway when I was doing the first attempt, I stopped halfway through the process of making the board just to finish up the doll. So after my first attempt, we are now the second attempt, which was very successful this time around. So I went with that. Also, I'm using a different glue for this one. Interesting. So I got up some boxes and glued them into the edge of the board. I started creating a border around the, well, board. Then I started to create a table for the background. Just a small table for the background. Nothing too special. I even added the edges to the side as well. The table took a second to work on because not only did I have to make the table and, and cut it to a point that I like, which I cut it a little too much and had to fill in those area with extra boxes and glue, I also had to use popsicle stick for the legs of the table, but also use three of them because you won't be really seeing the back of the table. I even used popsicle sticks for like the edges of the table as well. I even made a door which was a bit too small in my opinion. I didn't realize it until it was a little bit too late. Well, it was actually really late that I found out. Oh well, too late now. And I even created a shelving unit for the inside as well, as a wall decoration. Wish I had something to put inside it, but whatever. I wish I had put more things to it besides the details of the wall, but I 
don't really have a whole lot of things, so this will do. Oh look, I even added in more detail to the small door that I created for this diorama. Once everything was said and done, it was time for me to put this uh, diorama together. Using plaster! This took me several layers of plaster to get where I wanted it. It didn't look like how I wanted it to be, but it did get the job done. I think um, I didn't do this part correctly with the plaster. Oh well. Once all the plaster is dried properly, I took the thing outside and sprayed it down with black paint. Then I brought it back inside and started dry brushing silver on it. Yep, a lot of dry brushing in this video. I feel like though the dry brushing was a bit pointless. I don't really know. I did a lot of painting off camera because I was figuring out what I, what I like and didn't like. But I recorded the last part of the process. A lot of watered down painting was done, and this took forever for me to do. Because, well, I'm not good at wash painting. But I believe I did alright to make it look really good or whatnot, I don't know. Next up, blood. Well, painting in the blood, that is. Fake blood. Were you the behind all of this blood? Needed the reason for the regenerator arm to look like it is? Someone had to send it to the blender. And this was the painting part that I really enjoyed. But I, I don't know. Next up, it was time to put on the regenerator and the base together. Now at this point, I should have put in something over my work to protect it from paint chipping, but um, I forgot about that. So um, yeah, anyways, it's time for the regenerator to be in his new home. While I did use my own glue for this, I did use another glue called Uwu, I think that's how you say it, uh, to make sure he ain't going anywhere. And here it is, the entire piece. Here is my abomination. Now all I need to do is find a place to lock him up in. Thank you guys so much for watching. So sorry that I put this video series into a two-parter, but I hope you guys enjoy anyway. Consider subscribing and I'll see you dragons next week. Bye dragons!